Hi, in the last video we looked at how we can create our own user-defined functions. Now I want to go back and use some other functions written by someone else, some built-in ones, which in this case are going to allow us to generate some random numbers. Okay, so as I say, we talked in the last video about user-defined functions, how we can create them using the def keyword, do def my function, you can have some parameters if you want to or not, and we can use a return value if you want to or not to pass some data back to the main calling function. So if I do something like print hello, I can then call my function if I get rid of my indent and call my function to reference it and we'll get hello if I wrap this in a print, we'll get hello printed to the user based on that return value. So great, that's fine. But if you want to do something a bit more complex like generating some random numbers, I could well write a function for this, but generating a decent random number is quite a challenge and what we're going to look at today is not really totally random we're going to look at how we can use what I'd often refer to as pseudo random so you may well have come across the word pseudo talking about pseudo code so pseudo is Greek for fake so pseudo random means we're sort of generating fake random numbers so numbers which seem random but actually are not random and we'll talk more about this a bit later but I just wanted to mention that now because if you want to generate truly random numbers, you have to use some natural occurring event like radioactivity, which is truly random. Here we're not doing that. We're going to use, well, functions which rely on time and time since I believe 1970 or 1980 um, as a seed. But anyway, we'll come back to that. So um, we're not going to write our own functions to actually generate random numbers, though we can use a random function to help us. Uh, instead, we're going to use built-in functions and these built-in functions are not available to us automatically. So there isn't, unfortunately, a random function we can just use. Instead, we have to import what is called a module. So a module is a group of related subroutines, or related functions and methods, which effectively fulfill the purpose of a library. So a code library is just a bunch of subroutines which are available to us to use. I mentioned how variable, uh, various built-in functions like print and output are so, so important to us, uh, print and output, print and input, because they're quite hard to do. And there are other functions which are not really hard to do, but there's no point in us redoing them because someone else has already made them. And random is a bit like that. Some random functions are quite hard to make, some are less so, depending on how truly random you want it to be. Uh, but thankfully, we are able to import a module to do this. And so we do this using the input keyword and we follow it by the name of our module. In this case, it's random. And some modules are available with the default Python installation. So either available if you've downloaded Python or available on an IDE like Replit. Other ones you may have to install, which are a little bit trickier. So if you're doing something like machine learning, you may have to install a module. And in this case, random comes with default Python. We just have to import it. And now we have access to other functions, other methods, which are only available via the random um, module. Okay, so let's say we want to generate five random integers between one and 100. I can do a for loop to just repeat this and save us time for i in range uh, zero to five will give us five values. And then if I print, and inside my print statement, I'm going to make use of a random subroutine. So I'll do random dot, and then I'm going to call then this one I want to use is rand int to generate a random integer. This came from the random module, hence why I'm using a calling it like a method. And now inside the brackets it takes two parameters. So the lowest value we want, so if I want it to be at a minimum one, followed by at a maximum 100. And if I now run this code, we're going to get five, no we're not, because I did that wrong, we're going to get five uh, random values between one and 100. And if I run it again and again, I'm gonna get different values. Like I say, not truly random, but random enough for us to be able to use it perfectly fine in a program. And if we don't want it to change every time we run it, say I want to be able to send a program to a friend and I want them to be able to access the same values I did, I can set a seed. So if I do random.seed, and if I put any number into the brackets, if I just choose um, two is my favorite number, I can supply a seed of two. And what this does is this is the starting point for this random action. So it's gonna use two to start off. And this will force the numbers to be the same every single time 
because we're starting off with the same number. And this is why these numbers are not truly random. They are instead deterministic, if I can spell that right, hopefully. Deterministic because we can supply an input and we know what the output is going to be um, based on the input. So a seed will cause it to be the same. If I get rid of a seed, uh, it will go back to changing every single time. Okay, if instead of integers you want to have decimal numbers, so reals, we can instead use a random random method within the module random. So we get random.random. .random. This method has no parameters, takes no parameters, takes no arguments, I should say, really. And we can print this. Because what this does, if I can spell a number, we, what this is going to do is generate numbers within the range 0 to 1. But in this case, it's going to be decimal numbers. So we get quite a few decimal places here. And if I want to limit how many decimal places we get, I can wrap this in a round function. And if I leave this with just one argument, make sure I've got enough brackets, I am going to, um, this is going to make it an integer, which isn't very helpful here because it's either going to be 0 or 1. So instead, I can supply a second argument, which is how many decimal points we want. Let's do 4. And now we should get a slightly more manageable uh, set of random numbers. If I want to scale these to be across a wider range, what I can do is multiply this generated in a way a seed and multiply it by our upper range. So let's do maybe a thousand minus our lower range. Let's do a hundred. And then you add on your lower range, which in this case is a hundred. And then we should get bigger numbers within our range. I won't show all of the functions because some are really specific um, and don't really need to be used by many people. But in terms of lists, there are two useful ones in particular. So I've got a list called hat. I can imagine you know, a raffle having a hat and some names in the hat and you're going to pick one at random to give a prize to you maybe. Uh, we can use a so random dot choice method and inside we're going to supply our list which is hat as our parameter, as our argument I should say. Always mix those two up. And now it's going to choose a random item in our list. In that case, Bob, if I run it again, I'll get a different one, Charlie. Uh, from back to Charlie, because it's, it's random each time. So that can be quite useful. We can also shuffle our um, list. So if I shuffle hat like this, uh, nothing will happen because it's not, um, that's just shuffling it. So actually we shouldn't really have this in print. We get none returned, which isn't very helpful. So if I shuffle this, that's great, and if I now just actually, again, not very helpful, if I now print hat after the shuffle, uh, we're going to get a different order to one we had before, because lists are ordered, uh, the order does matter, and in that case, it's changing the order for us. That's also quite useful. So maybe we are changing these names to be of athletes, and we want to uh, go through each athlete name and generate a random score for them. Maybe we're doing long jump in some school sports day, maybe, and we want to generate a random uh, jump length for them. So the world record for long jump is, as far as I'm aware, about nine meters, just below nine meters. And so we may want to generate numbers between the range one and nine. I think probably you can manage one meter, even if you're not very good, I think, I, I hope at least. So we want to generate numbers between this range. So we can use what we did before. We can, uh, let's just do uh, jump length and use random dot random and make sure we make this um, scaled by doing, so let's do 10 as our upper limit, subtracted by our lower limit, which is one, multiplied, uh, added our lower limit, which is one again, and now we might want to round this, so jump length equals round jump length, and let's do this to two decimal places. And now we can print the athlete followed by their jump length, which we've generated randomly. So let's run this, let's get rid of this white space and see what happens. So um, we get some values here, which is fine, which works how we kind of wanted it to. There is an issue here. So we have a new world record holder because Alice has jumped nine meters. And like I say, as far as I'm aware, the world record is I think 8.95 because I just looked it up. And um, we have values which go beyond it. So it's not very realistic that you're just going to magically beat the world record. And that's because these numbers are distributed uniformly. So they're distributed uniformly between one and nine. And so you're likely, you know, just as likely to get a value of nine as you are a value of one. And that's not really, or as a value of five, right? So it's not, that's not really realistic. People tend to gather about a certain amount. So maybe the average is five, which still seems quite far. Um, but, you know, it's very unlikely you're going to get nine. It's possible someone could get nine, but it's very, very unlikely. 
instead of using a uniform distribution, we can use a normal distribution, also called a Gaussian distribution. Now, you may not have come across this in maths. It sort of depends what stage you're at. But this is where we have a nice, smooth bell curve. And it's a way of generating probabilities which match normal human life. We don't tend to have people who are low, massively tall or can jump really, really far. We have a very few people who can jump really, really far or jump really, really a short length. We tend to sort of group around the mean. And that is what a normal distribution is modeling. So instead of using the random function again, I can get rid of this and instead do random.gauss. So Gauss is a mathematician who uh, this distribution is named after. And this function, to, this method takes two arguments. The first one is the average. So let's say just the average is five, which may not be realistic, I'm not quite sure. And our second argument is the standard deviation. So this is a measure of how spread out people tend to be. So let's say the majority of people are gonna be within about a meter and a half of that mean. And now if I run this, we're going to get similar looking values, but now they're much more centered around the mean. So the majority are gonna be between um, 6.5 and 3.5. We do get here Alice, who again is smashing it with 7.88. That's a pretty good score, but it's not nine. You know, this is much more realistic, assuming she was a professional athlete, I suppose. So the values are a bit more realistic. We can still get some extreme outliers, but it's, it's not a uniform distribution, it follows the bell curve. This right now includes two programming exercises. First of all, I want you to, based on the last video, create a function called gen random list, which is gonna take three parameters, and it's going to return a list of the size, which we specify as our first parameter, and then randomly generate values in that list uh, until we hit the length between the lowest and highest parameters, which also supplied. The second exercise is about using the Gaussian distribution we looked at just now and generating some heights for people. So I've supplied a, um, a mean of 160 and a standard deviation of seven. So you can use this in the Gauss function. And also, if you want to replicate the exact values I used here, make sure you use a seed of 10 and you should get the same values here. Uh, but the names you can obviously change, you can add more names if you want to. Uh, in your list of names. So have a read through, have a pause and um, have a go at these exercises. There'll be solutions in the description.